Hello. Today we're going to discuss delivering low latency multiplayer games with AWS Edge infrastructure. My name is Samuel Folks, and I'm a senior solutions architect with AWS. My colleague, Leonardo, will also be presenting with me today. Now I'll introduce Leonardo. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here with us. My name is Leonardo Solano. I'm a senior solution architect for hybrid cloud in AWS. All right, so today we're going to start off by discussing multiplayer gaming. Now, this is an industry that has grown significantly over the past few years. A multiplayer game is essentially a video game where more than one player plays in the same game environment at the same time. Now, these players may either be you know, locally in the same place or they may be spread out in different places you know, across the globe. Now, as these metrics show, multiplayer gaming has grown significantly in the past few years and is set to grow exponentially over the next few years. We currently have billions of people playing multiplayer games each year. Now, one of the big problems, and it's a really difficult problem to solve with multiplayer games where players are distributed in different places across the globe is latency. So we're going to talk a little bit about what latency is, why it's a problem, and some of the ways that we can solve the problems posed by latency. Now, latency is essentially the length of time it takes for data to move across a network. And this is typically measured in milliseconds. Now, there are various reasons, there are various things that actually cause latency. Uh, one is the universal speed limit, right? It's the speed of light which is essentially you know, the, the, the limit at which data can move. Now, in addition to that, there are other issues such as having data move far distances. Now, consider the example of an Amazon delivery driver that needs to make a delivery from Chicago to New York. Now, let's assume that the road that this delivery driver travels along has a speed limit that he cannot exceed. That in and of itself, will limit or restrict how quickly he can make that delivery. Additionally, consider that there are different types of roads. There are highways, there are city streets, there are roads of different sizes and different qualities. Now, if that driver chooses to take the city streets, he would certainly take a very long time to get to New York from Chicago. If he chose to take the interstate, however, he would get there much faster. Now, with networking, the problem is similar. As I mentioned before, the universal speed limit, that is the speed of light, restricts how quickly data can move across these lines. But there are other issues as well. Sometimes data moves over a network path that is not the most optimized. So the data packets take multiple hops, and the data packets, as I mentioned before, have to move very long distances. So let's quickly discuss why this is a problem in multiplayer gaming. Now, firstly, there is an issue with the delivery of content. Now, latency negatively impacts game download speeds. Now, I consider myself an avid gamer. And one of the most frustrating experiences when I've purchased a new game and I'm excited to play it is having to sit and wait for that game to be downloaded. Latency exacerbates that problem. It makes, you know, it, it increases these game download speeds. Another issue from the perspective of, you know, content delivery is with in-game media streaming, whether it's an in-game video stream or audio stream, latency makes the experience less enjoyable because it introduces things such as buffering and other artifacts in the media stream. Another issue with latency is that it negatively impacts the gameplay experience. Now, if as a player, I need to wait on data to get to me from the server and it doesn't get to me quickly enough, then I will not be able to respond you know, in a suitable amount of time to the things that take place in the game, which we gamers call lagging and it's never fun. Another way that you know latency impacts the gameplay experience 
is that it creates an uneven playing field. Now let's consider two gamers. One person has a wonderful connection, very low latency. The other one has a connection that's, you know, very high latency, not, not so great. Now imagine those characters are, you know, doing something together. Maybe they're having, you know, some kind of a battle royale. You know, the player with the lower latency will be able to respond quicker, much faster to things that happen in the game because of that lower latency. Whereas the player with higher latency won't be able to respond as quickly, and that will give player A an advantage over player B. So we've discussed what latency is. We've discussed briefly why it's a problem in the context of multiplayer gaming. Let's look at some solutions. The way we reduce latency is essentially by moving traffic across an optimized network. Now, there are certain things we cannot change. One of those things is the universal constant, right? That speed of light. We can't make data move any faster. What we can do, however, is one, we can bring content closer to end users. Now, let's say there's a player in Miami that is interacting with a server that's located in London. An easy and fast way to improve that gameplay experience for the player in Miami is to actually bring the game content, the, the, the static and dynamic assets, closer to that player in Miami by serving the game content from a server that's located physically closer to that player in Miami. So that's one way. We reduce the distance between the players and the actual uh, you know, game servers by bringing that content closer. Another way we can help to mitigate the problem of latency is by optimizing the network path. Now, we can do this by, one, reducing the actual physical distance of the pipe that carries the data between the player and the servers. But we can also do this in other ways. For example, we can reduce the number of network hops that a data packet needs to take you know, between the player and the server. So we're now going to talk about some of the services in the AWS Edge Infrastructure Toolkit that can help address and mitigate the problem of latency. The first service we're going to discuss is Amazon CloudFront. Amazon CloudFront is our content delivery network service that helps customers deliver both static and dynamic content with low latency and high transfer speeds. Now, CloudFront improves the end user experience in a few ways. One, it reduces latency by caching content closer to end users. It improves security by encrypting and moving traffic across the AWS network, delivering game data through a worldwide network of data centers called edge locations. Additionally, Amazon CloudFront helps to protect applications from DDoS attacks, bots, and malicious actors. And it can protect applications essentially hosted anywhere. Additionally, Amazon CloudFront has serverless compute features that lets you insert your code and execute that code at these points of presence much closer to your end users. You can essentially tailor your content and manage your server requests based on what customers you know, request, based on customer profiles, based on where the customers are for a more personalized experience. Finally, with content caching, you can essentially consolidate end user requests and lower your bandwidth usage. And this will result in cost savings for you. Now, the Amazon CloudFront CDN is massively scaled and globally distributed. The CloudFront network consists of over 450 points of presence. And as we mentioned before, we also call these edge locations and leverages the highly resilient Amazon backbone network for superior performance and availability. That way, your content can be cached and delivered closer to your players, providing a much faster and more reliable user experience. Amazon CloudFront now also supports the WebSocket protocol, which allows for bi-directional movement of data between your game clients and your game servers. Now, game developers often leverage the WebSocket protocol to support things in games such as leaderboards, 
chat apps, and you know, other in-game content. One of the fantastic things about exchanging data over WebSockets is that it cuts out the cost of reinitiating connections because you can just maintain that socket connection and pass data over it bidirectionally. Now, this slide illustrates what bringing content closer to users actually looks like. This is a representation of the AWS global footprint. Each of these dots represents a point of presence in the CloudFront network. So as you can see, through this vast distribution, this vast network of edge locations, Amazon CloudFront can actually help reduce latency by providing an ecosystem of edge locations, of points of, well, of presence, and security services that can work together to help you reduce latency for your players. As you can see, these edge locations are all over the globe. They're in 90 cities across 49 countries. Now, some of the use cases for Amazon CloudFront is delivering fast, secure, static and dynamic gaming content and APIs. Also, it helps to accelerate both live and on-demand streaming video content. It supports low latency gaming. Also, it allows you to deliver large patches of gaming updates and content quickly and in a low latency manner. Now let's take a look at how Amazon CloudFront actually works. Now Amazon CloudFront is designed to accelerate both static and dynamic HTTP and HTTPS content. This also includes the WebSocket protocol as we discussed uh, previously. Now Amazon CloudFront is designed in a three layer or three tier architecture. The first layer, as we discussed, is comprised of a network of over 450 points of presence distributed across the globe. These serve to cache content closer to end users, and they also provide the compute for CloudFront functions. Now, we did touch briefly on serverless edge compute, and these functions can help you to actually execute code closer to your end users. Now, behind these edge locations are a network of regional edge caches. Regional edge caches are CloudFront locations that are deployed globally close to your viewers. They're located between your gaming servers and the points of presence. Now, these regional edge caches support Lambda at edge functions, which is another form of serverless compute that allows you to execute code closer to your end users. Finally, the third layer is the CloudFront origin shield which is an additional layer in the CloudFront caching infrastructure that helps to minimize the load on your backend gaming servers, improve their availability, and reduce their operating costs. It does this by providing an additional layer of caching in front of those servers to reduce the number of requests that actually get to those uh, backend gaming servers. Now, let's look at a customer example. Supercell is a mobile game development company that is responsible for a number of mobile game titles, some of which you may have heard about, such as Clash of Clans and Brawl Stars. Supercell needed a way to be able to deliver game updates while maintaining an excellent player experience. How Supercell managed to achieve this was by deploying a distributed edge model to reach their globally distributed audience. Supercell used Amazon CloudFront to distribute assets to all players that play Supercell games. The result was that Supercell was able to scale to supporting over 250 million monthly users. It was able to support game launches and upticks in, in, in you know, uh, user counts. And most importantly, it was able to reduce the latency that end users experienced when playing their games. The outcome was superior performance and an improved experience for players of Supercell games across the world. Next, we're going to discuss AWS Global Accelerator. AWS Global Accelerator is a networking service that improves the availability and performance of applications with global reach. Global Accelerator essentially uses the AWS Global Network to route traffic optimal regional endpoints based on health, client location, and policies that you configure, 
which increases the availability of your applications. Now let's discuss some of the key features of AWS Global Accelerator. Firstly, Global Accelerator allows you to assign static IPs as a fixed entry point to your applications in single or multiple AWS regions. Secondly, not only does Global Accelerator accelerate TCP traffic, it also accelerates UDP traffic that targets application load balancers, network load balancers, or Amazon EC2 instances. Another key feature of Global Accelerator is its ability to facilitate traffic failover in less than 30 seconds upon detection of an unhealthy endpoint. And AWS Global Accelerator actually allows you to move endpoints between availability zones with no change to your clients or your DNS configuration. Now let's take a look at how AWS Global Accelerator actually works. Now previously, we mentioned that AWS Global Accelerator allows for the assigning of static IPs. These IPs are Anycast IPs. Now, Anycast is essentially a network routing methodology that allows us to assign a single IP address to multiple network devices or multiple servers. So essentially, devices can share a single IP address. Now, routers actually route packets to these servers or network devices based on how close they are. So Global Accelerator actually allows you to create what are known as accelerators to improve the performance of your applications for local and global users. The Global Accelerator customer routing feature, for example, allows you to accelerate traffic to your game servers easily and effectively. With a custom routing accelerator, you can direct multiple users to a unique port on your accelerator. The accelerator will map the port to a specific EC2 destination with a private IP address, a port in a single or multiple AWS regions, and route the traffic there. This feature makes it easier to integrate AWS Global Accelerator with your application logic and your gaming servers. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Leonardo to discuss AWS Local Zones. Now let's talk about real-time gameplay. Gaming companies want to be able to provide a low latency experience for players globally by grouping those who are physically close to each other to game sessions hosted in a location close to them. AWS Global Infrastructure expands across 31 regions and 99 availability zones and 32 local zones, enabling gaming companies to host game servers closer to the player. AWS Local Zones are a type of AWS infrastructure deployment that plays compute and storage databases and other select services closer to large populations, industries, and IT centers, enabling you to deliver applications that require single digit millisecond latency to end users. In AWS Local Zones, AWS deploys and operates local zones in large metro centers. Customers can consume, compute, and store services in on-demand models. We offer the same AWS core services as we have in regions, exposing the same APIs and management tools to keep a consistent, consistent experience across AWS global infrastructure. Finally, local zones are integrated with region services through a high bandwidth and reliable AWS backbone allowing customers to create hybrid architectures from the edge to AWS regions. Local zones can be used for workloads that need to achieve single digit millisecond latency for end users or to manage on-premises installations. In summary, these use cases can be grouped into two categories. First one is latency-based. In latency-based, customers deploy workloads on a local zones to deliver single digit millisecond latency for their workloads. This includes customers in gaming industries like Supercells, who wants to play select part of their application in multiple locations around the world to allow them to reach more players with low latency. At the same time, game developers would rather be building fun, innovative games versus expanding time and network handling infrastructure. 
On the second hand, we have location based. It mainly applies for regulated industries as financial services and public sector, where customers need to put part of their workloads in a particular location for residency needs. Let's take a visual example to talk more about a use case for a gaming customers who will benefit from local zones. Let's say they have player in Dallas, Texas. They are already served by four AWS regions in the United States. However, latest insensitive part of gaming servers deployed to the region depends on the physical distance between the end users and the regions. Typically, the latency to the closest regions is of the order of tens of milliseconds. But now, this customer benefits from the 17 local zones across major metropolitan area in the United States. Local zones minimize the latency required to connect to any users by bringing AWS core services to the edge in metropolitan areas, which in most cases results in a single digit millisecond latency. Local zones are a logical extension of a part in region. And while they are not physically co-located with the region, they instead lie in a different physical geography. Coming back to the player in Dallas, before the player had to connect to the US region through internet. Now we have extended the region to the Dallas metro area by building an AWS local zones in Dallas to serve this player with low latency from gaming perspective. We have now a total of 32 local zones, 15 outside of the United States in cities like Bangkok, Buenos Aires, Copenhagen, Delhi, among others. And we have also 17 in the United States. We will continue to launch local zones in 21 metro areas in 18 countries. But now we are going to discuss about a use case with Epic Games. Epic Games is using AWS local zones since February 2023 to support its North America Central Server region. We are using that for Fortnite. This new Fortnite server region will bring low latency gameplay to more players in the Central United States and Mexico. The North America Central Server region joining to other two AWS powered Fortnite server regions in North America. Players in North America are assigned to whichever Fortnite server region that will provide the best gaming experience. Initially, with the deployment of the North America Central, Epic Games was hosting few competitive events on this new region to test server performance and to debug any software issue. But tournaments in North America, they were generally hosted on the North America East and North America West server regions. However, since ch chapter four, season two, Competitive events will no longer be hosted on the North America East and North America West server regions. Instead, tournaments in North America will run on the North America Central servers. Here we have the AWS Local Zones architecture. With AWS Local Zone architecture, what we have is the extension of the VPC that starts in the region and can be extended toward the local zone. In this example, we have the region, which is US West in Oregon, but the local zone is located in Seattle. When you create a subnet in the local zone, your VPC is extended to that local zone and your VPC will treat this subnet as any other subnet in availability zones. Related with routing and security groups and network access control list, is something that you can reuse and reconfigure if you require that in the local zone itself. At the same time, AWS local zones have their own connectivity to internet and in select locations also support AWS Direct Connect. What that really means is when an end user and from the gaming perspective, a player required to access a game server that live in the AWS local zones, they can connect directly through internet to that game server without hyping in the traffic toward the party region. At the same time with Direct Connect, those resources that live in the AWS local zones 
can be connected to on-premises installation with very low latency communications. Because local zones are connected to the partner region with multiple redundant, secure, and high-speed links, you can consume any regional services seamlessly, such as Amazon S3, RDS, or DynamoDB. In addition, the management console for local zones is also accessed through the partner region, and all login and other metadata goes back to the region for you to view in services such as CloudTrail and CloudWatch. And now let's review the set of services that we have in all local zones. Generally, we'll support five different core services in local zones. Those are Amazon EC2, when we support EC2 families like C5, M5, R5, G3, and G4DN. And we have, we have also EVS. And in EVS, we support GP2. From container perspective, we have Amazon ECS and Amazon EKS as well. And from BPC, we support all the BPC feature set, extending the networking from the region toward the local zone. At the same time, we have a set of services that are fully integrated with local zones. AWS local zones are integrated with region services through a high bandwidth and reliable AWS background. This allows our customers to have a native integration with services as Amazon CloudTrail, Amazon CloudFormation, Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling, and Amazon CloudWatch. What it really means is when a customer has a pipeline for infrastructure as a code, they, they can reuse that asset to CloudFormation or CDK or probably using Terraform as well in order to manage the infrastructure as a code up to AWS local zone. Now let's summarize the AWS infrastructure for games. With the AWS CloudFrom, gaming companies can reduce the latency to deliver game content, video streaming, and download delivery. With AWS local zones, gaming companies can deploy game servers closer to players to reach a global audience with low latency. And with Global Accelerator, gaming companies can accelerate traffic from players to game servers that are deployed in any AWS region. In numbers, our global infrastructure, AWS Cloud expands 99 availability zones with 31 geographic regions around the world. But we announced plans for 15 more availability zones and five more AWS regions in Canada, Israel, Malaysia, New Zealand, and Thailand. And finally, let's see what we have in terms of the global edge locations. AWS POPs have the full AWS edge networking services stack at each location with caching, networking connectivity, edge compute, and perimeter protection. These 450 global POPs are connected by AWS global infrastructure redundant dedicated fibers, providing low network latency between applications in AWS regions and edge locations. So thank you very much for attending this test talk. Thank you for attending and thank you for being here with us.